G'day YouTube. I thought I'd come out this morning and do a quick video on uh, Nepenthes lolii, which has always been one of my favourite species from uh, Borneo, Mount Kinabalu and a few other neighbouring mountains. I, I collected quite a few of, over the past few years. So they are a very slow growing species, so they don't take up much room for now. But as they mature, I'm going to have to figure out what to do with them all. But I thought I'd give you a look at them and give you a rundown of the care I give them and what I do to grow these amazing species. So I'll bring you over. Have a Put my coffee down. So I think I started getting some lowly eye around five years ago this was one of my first ones uh, in the early days I definitely didn't have the right conditions for them so through winter spring and autumn that they tend to do quite well but as summer would come in here in Sydney they would definitely get cooked and didn't enjoy it would go backwards but that being said, I do feel they are fairly a fairly easy species to grow if you've got you know close to the right conditions. They do they do take a bit more warmth than uh, some of the other highlanders, but they definitely appreciate the drop in nighttime temperature. Uh, what are we at the moment? We're 19 degrees in the greenhouse this morning, and it's 87 percent humidity it's a bit of a miserable day outside but it will it will bump up to 25 to that and my, my whole greenhouse is basically running high land at the moment for winter and then i'll step up to intermediate through summer with the air conditioner back there to uh to keep the temperature down now I do, I've moved all these over to um, Akadama and Perlite, and more recently Akadama, Kanuma and Perlite, oh Pumice, sorry. And I feel I really are enjoying the sort of chunkier, drier mix. I do let them dry dry out a bit before rewatering. I'll let the, the moss heads go a bit, a bit dry. Uh, you see, I, w I watered yesterday, so everything's a bit wet at the moment. And this moss, I sort of just laid on top, and it, you can see it's sort of taken in some parts, but not others. I might uh, try and give you a bit more light for this. Here we go. Have a look at the mix there. This is a TC, or tissue culture one, out through a mate of mine that. Uh, I think there's a, if you overdo one of the particular hormones, I don't know much about TC, I've never done it, uh, but you can get this uh, explosion of basils and extra growths, and the problem is this uh, star moss and other undesirables really gets up in the growth there and I've got to get in there occasionally and pick it all out because lowly eye in particular does not like a wet crown so when you whenever I'm watering I try and stop water sitting in here and I think it's the leaf shape water will track down into there where the growth tip is and you can rot the plant and lose it now this this particular one here which is one of my other older ones which was looking fantastic a year ago decided to just stop growing completely when I moved here and uh, has only started come back into gear those two leaves have come out let's throw out the focus there have come out in the last sort of two months it's finally come back which I'm very happy to see everything everything with lowly eye happens slowly so if you make a mistake you'll see it slowly and then if if you recover it, it'll uh, it'll come back slowly. You can see a little bit of yellow, yellowing on the leaves. It has probably had a bit too much light 
I did turn the uh, turn the Mars Hydro there up a bit a month or so ago to but uh, it did start yellowing a few leaves so I've bumped it back down to about 50% Uh, they do, they can take quite a lot of light. And you can see there the, uh, the famous lid bristles. I sometimes get occasional bits of exudate on them. It sort of looks like it's gone a bit mouldy there. I, I recently added a few more fans for a bit more air movement. This pitch is just starting to fade, but another one coming there and there'll be another one there. But I've definitely noticed once they get about this size are a bit smaller than this um, the speed of growth has definitely really jumped up in the last year I do I do like topping most of my pots with the live sphagnum uh, you, you see under there it's only a thin thin layer down to the Akadama and uh, Kuma and pumice mix but one thing I will suggest is you do have to keep it trimmed back. You see there, I've pulled it all out away from the crown. Uh, I probably actually should give this moss a bit of a trim. Uh, this this is a red moss, as you can start seeing the red heads starting to come through. It grows a lot slower than the uh, the bigger green species of moss I've got going. So I might uh, I might start trying to you can see those I think those two are red moss as well. I might start trying to swap them all over uh, just to protect the plants a bit and th these are famous mostly for their upper pitches which are just these massive toilet bowl shapes and uh, in nature the, there's a little tree through that comes along licks the exudate under the lid there and poops in the pitcher and that's what they feed on but I suspect at these smaller size, sizes they're more uh, Still more aiming to attract bugs, ants, and things like that. Uh, you'll see on the lower pictures, it's got the little, the little ladder up the front that most, uh, well, pretty much all lower pictures in Nepenthes have. And they're just such a different, wicked species. Uh, the closest I can show you to an upper picture is Lolio ventricosa here, which is definitely as close as you can get to an upper without waiting you know 12 15 years for your plants to mature um, let's say well here i've got a lot i've got a long way to go before these get close to uppers but even at the lowers they're just such a spectacular little little species see a few lid hairs on that one some nice candy striping and the pitches are just woody, rock hard. I can squeeze that quite hard. And it's just solid, solid pitches, which I suppose if you've got a shrew jumping on you every day, it's gonna help protect the, uh, protect the plant and stop them breaking it. So yeah, my, uh, my temperatures in here range between 25 and 12 degrees at night through winter uh, once summer comes along it's more like 28 and dropping to 18 which I definitely put more in the intermediate stage but these guys don't seem to mind it at all uh, being the first last summer was the first year I had air conditioning and I definitely realized that my Highlander Penthes didn't take a hit as much as they did in previous years uh, some of the some of my lowlanders and more lowland growing um, hybrids have definitely slowed down in the greenhouse so i think i'm going to start moving a lot of them out for uh for spring and they can live outside through summer with some warmer temps and i'll see how they do out there video today uh hopefully in another five or so years this guy might be starting to move up towards uppers and i'll keep you updated on how that goes hopefully but yeah if you haven't yet please jump on and hit the subscribe button see more videos I'll, I'll keep working on more things and if you have anything you want to see more of please let me know in the comments or 
get on to me on uh, Instagram might be easiest and we'll go from there. Right, thanks again.